on today's episode. Welcome. Here I show repairs I've done and share the techniques and tools that I use. If you find this video valuable or even entertaining, uh, please subscribe as it really helps. It's great to get your feedback, so leave a comment below and don't forget to hit that like button. Also check out the description below because there'll be additional information and some useful links. So a little while ago I uh, made this oscilloscope from a, from a kit and uh, as always there'll be a link down in the description to, to that. And I did comment at the time that uh, I was very, very pleased with the unit and quite surprised by the additional features that it, that it had. Uh, it works very well obviously as a, as, as a scope and when you go into the menu it also has the frequency meter function. So uh, somebody commented on that video what's the uh, the upper frequency for this for this counter. So looking back through the documentation I discovered that it's 5 megahertz which is uh, not too too shabby and you know the other features that we've got here like being able to put out the, the, the test signal and you can adjust the frequency and the voltage of that. Yep, very neat indeed. Uh, the, uh, the commenter then came back with, well, I've seen uh, an application on the web um, to, to make this a, a scope that could display actually on a, on a PC. And I had vaguely read in the, uh, in the documentation, yes, there was a, a PC interface for it, but I never never really thought much of it. I don't think didn't think that it could do very much. Um, but uh, I decided to, to, to take a look and it's it's worked out uh, very very well indeed. So here's the JITEC uh, web page for the uh, PC oscilloscope software and uh, just when I looked at it, um, is it does it support the model I have which is a DSO 068 and yes it does. Um, it also supports the frequency uh, frequency generator, so that's uh, that's all good. And uh, looking at the sort of features of it, this is the dual trace version, which is with the uh, the DSO uh, 094 oscilloscope. Uh, my oscilloscope only has the the one trace, uh, so we can see what it's supposed to look like, and. Uh, an explanation of uh, what all the little buttons and things do, so it's uh, quite quite comprehensive. I was very very surprised. Um, down here, it tells you how to in, well, where to download it and what you need um, to to run it to install this uh, virtual COM port driver. And that was straightforward and um, it says straightforward and, and easy, no installation required. It's just a, an exe file, and uh, you're good to go. So um, we'll take a look at it now and see how it connects to the scope. So now we're going to connect the, uh, the little scope up. First of all, we'll plug in the, the USB and we can hear that it's been registered by the laptop. And then obviously we need to switch it on. So it comes up in, in regular scope mode as we can see uh, as our, our, our trace as before so now over on the on the PC what we can do is to uh, just check in the options in the port setup we can scan to see where our device is and it's on COM5 COM5 found and selected and the board rate set so now we go to connect and we get the green button here that tells us that we're connected and on the on the scope we can see it's gone into USB scope mode so now if we uh, if we run we can see the, uh, the the trace as before on the on the scope but uh, here in uh, in more detail so we have control here over the uh, over the time base so we can set the time base here as we wish but we don't have control over the um, 
over the volts per division. We have to do that manually on the on the scope, obviously, because it's it, there are they are physical switches, so we can switch uh, switch this around to the different uh, volts per division. So we go back to 0.1 of a volt per division. Yeah, so we need to select those also the, the coupling mode AC or or off. So we're DC coupled at the moment. Um, so those that's the only thing that needs to be controlled via the, the scope itself. Um, what we have at the top is the the, the buffer. So we can scroll through and uh, see the, the obviously it's a continuous sine wave at the moment, so we can see that in the in the buffer there. And there is the the option to to change the record length, so we can increase that and get more more samples of the uh, of the trace. Uh, this little triangle here is the the trigger point within the buffer, but as this is a continuous uh, square wave, that's not not relevant. I'll show you that a bit later. So now, if we stop stop the trace. Uh, obviously we can scroll through the buffer and see the, the data there. So I'm just going to go into a slightly more in-depth uh, analysis using, uh, using an RS-232 port to, to capture the data. So now we're going to try and capture some ASCII data off of a, a serial port. I've got a USB to serial adapter installed and it's also got a loop back on it. So that's the, the COM port over here and if we look in the setup for the serial port, we can see it's set to 9600 board, 8 bits, no parity, and one stop bit. So 9600 board uh, works out to be 104 microseconds per event or board, as you will. Uh, so on the time base here, we're set to 50 microseconds. So what we're looking for are pulses approximately two divisions wide. Now if we run the, the, uh, the scope and then in the little monitor here we type the A and we'll just stop the, uh, the trace there so we can take a look. Now we can see the pulses which are approximately two divisions so we know that this is the, um, the RS-232 data that we're interested in. Now the challenge here is that it's all upside down and back to front. So in, in time, this was the first event that it, that it saw, and we can see by scrolling through the, the buffer that that indeed was the, the first thing, and then there's the last thing. But what, what do these things mean? So if we adjust it like that, so this will be the start bit, and then we have the, the data bits, the eight data bits, um, but they're kind of in reverse order. So this will be the least significant bit and over here will be the most significant bit. So if we try and interpret what that means, uh, we can say that there's one start bit and then that is effectively a zero. So this will be a one. So we've got one and then zero, 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 four zeros, and then two ones, and then a zero. So if you write that down, that becomes zero, one, one, zero, 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 one, which if you work out is um, six, one. So hex six, one is uh, the lowercase a. And if we run the trace again, and we choose an uppercase A. If we look at that, then we can see that the trace has now changed because uppercase A is 4, 1. So again, we have our start bit, and then the least significant bit is a 1. And then we have 1, 2, 3, 4, 5 zeros this time, and then 1, 0. So if you run that backwards, it's 4 1 which is which is a so uh, we can see that the the trace is is, is working it's uh, quite interesting 
if you consider something like um, lowercase p, we run that, you can see it looks, uh, looks quite different. Uh, if we just stop that, we have to again move our, our, our trace through and we can see that in fact because the, um, the start bit is a zero and then we have three zeros and three ones and then a zero because the lowercase p is seven zero hex so you can have a lot of a lot of fun here um, especially if you type an uppercase u so if we move into the window there type uppercase u because the uppercase u is effectively five five which is all ones and zeros so it will look like a square wave now this is something you don't want to be doing if you're trying to work out where the start and the start bit is because um, you will never find it well you you know that it's it's here so it's just one zero one zero one zero so um, that's been a, a little uh, overview really just to demonstrate the the capability of the scope there's all sorts of other things in here that you can mess around with and I'm sure you'll have a lot of fun with it